In this video, we want to look at how to organize a set of data that we've shared with the rest of our class. Uh, lots of times in labs, we will collect data through a Google form so that we can share it from lots of different groups and different class periods. And we can use all of that information to be able to draw some better conclusions by calculating some averages and other statistical tests. And in this video, I want to walk through the steps and show you how to take that data and get it organized within a Google Sheets and then also take that and uh, organize it into a better table. So our first step here is where we're going to start is this is the published data for a photosynthesis lab um, where student groups to measured rates of photosynthesis using a veneer carbon dioxide sensor in conditions of dark and lights and then also a condition uh, some groups did with no plant tissue and no spinach leaves and we have our values here in PPT per minute it's a measurement of gas per minute and this is the rate of photosynthesis so the the, the probes the CO2 probes measured measured how much carbon dioxide was in the chamber and then um, we found the rate of that uh, uh, change and these are the values that are being displayed here and so to get this information into a Google Sheets to be able to do some calculations and set it up in a data table it can be a little tricky and sometimes uh, it doesn't work very well and so there's a, a trick or a key to being able to do this and the first thing I want to do is highlight all of this information I could type this in by hand into a Google Sheet but that would take a long time and not be very good use of your time so if I highlight it um, oftentimes students will just highlight the data which doesn't work very well because it puts it all into one box within our Google Sheet. So the trick here is to, starting with whatever the form is called, so this one's called Photosynthesis Lab Data. I'm gonna highlight everything here, including this title up at the top. And once I've highlighted everything, I'm gonna push Control-C or Command-C on my Mac, Control-C on a Chromebook or a PC, and that will copy all of it. And I have a Google Sheet already set up, so I'm just gonna swap over to this. And I typically like to paste my data, my, my values, um, not in A1. I like to have a little space around to work with them. So I'm gonna click on this B2, column B, and then row number two. I'm gonna push Control V on a PC or a Chromebook and Command V on a Mac. And we'll see that that then pastes all of it so the numbers are in different uh, columns and it's not all in one individual box or one individual cell. And uh, now that I have this here, the first thing that I want to do is put a name for my spreadsheet. So I'm going to call this Photosynthesis Lab so that I can revert back to it and I can find it a little bit later if I need to. To clean this up a little bit here, uh, get rid of some of these columns and some of these rows, I don't need them in my data table. So I'm going to start by deleting this title here. I'm going, to give an, um, I'm going to give this table a title a little bit later once we get it cleaned up. So I'm going to just going to highlight it and click delete on my keyboard and that will delete that content. Um, I also don't need the timestamp. I don't need the group member names. So I'm going to delete those and um, I also have some grayed cells here. So I'm going to delete all of these and I can do this actually pretty quickly. If I click on B, it'll highlight the entire column. And then if I right click on this letter B and on a Chromebook or a Mac, it's two fingers in the bottom right hand corner on your trackpad. I can bring up this menu and I'm gonna click delete column there it's gone. And then I can also do two at the same time or multiple at the same time. If I hold down shift, uh, I'll click on B again because we deleted the previous B. So I'll click on B, I'm gonna hold shift and then select C as well by clicking on it. So now both of those are highlighted and if I right click on them, I can go delete columns B and C and now they're deleted. And I'm also gonna do that with the class. I don't need the class. The next thing that's probably going to be helpful is I've got titles here for my different columns, what, the, what these different pieces of data mean, but they're getting overlapped because the titles are too long. Uh, and so there's a couple of different ways you could solve this problem. One of them is if I move my cursor between B and C columns here, if I click and drag, I'm dragging on my cursor, I can expand it so that there's more space. This is one way, but then my table is going to be really big and... Um, I don't, it's just not going to fit as well on a page, and this would not be my preference. So I'm actually going to go back and make it about the size it was. Um, and I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this, this feature called Wrap Text. And I can find it up in my toolbar. It's this icon right here. It's called Text Wrapping. And if I click that little down arrow, in the middle there's an option to Wrap Text. So I'll click that. And what that does then is it puts all of the text on multiple lines. So it wraps it so that it fits all in this box. 
And I can see I've got rate of photosynthesis gets cut off a little bit, so I'm going to expand it just a bit. There we go. And so that, that fits much better. Uh, and if I do that for the rest of these, uh, I can actually do this by highlighting both of them. Go up to that same icon, text wrapping, and I'm going to go wrap text. And we'll do a little expanding by clicking on the line between C and D to expand a little bit. And then we'll do the same thing with D. So there we go. Now they're, now they're all wrapped and the columns are still not too, bri uh, too big. Everything fits pretty nicely there. Um, and then just for my personal preference, I'm going to highlight these three and I'm going to put them in the center of that box. So right now they're horizontally aligned on the left-hand side. I'm going to click center. And then I also have one other trick I can do. I can do a vertical align and I can align them in the middle of that box. So it makes them nice and neat there. And so now I can see, oh, all of these data values are rate of photosynthesis in the dark. And then I've got the light. And then here's values that some groups did with no, um, no plant tissue, no spinach. Um, and then I have this gray box here. I don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete row five. Same process as I did. I click on number five. And if I right click two fingers in the bottom right hand corner of my trackpad, I can click delete row. And that is now deleted. I do want to add another column to this here because each one of these measurements are representing different trials uh, because we had lots of different groups from different classes to doing the same experiment and collecting different values. Um, we have different trials for this. So I'm going to type in trials and I'm going to bold this and I'm going to center and vertically align so it fits with the rest of my boxes. And then I've got multiple trials here. I'm going to type in one two, and three, and I could continue to type these as well, but Spreadsheets and Microsoft Excel also has a cool feature where if you highlight three boxes in a row, if you have a series, like we're going to expand this, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, if I highlight three in a row, uh, the spreadsheet can continue this series. You'll notice there's a little blue box that pops up when I've highlighted these threes. If I move my mouse over it, it's a little plus icon. And I can now click and drag all the way down to the bottom, and it will continue that series for me. The trick is, the requirement is that you have to have at least three boxes in a row of a series. If I wanted odd numbers, even numbers, I could do that. But the spreadsheet needs at least three in a row to be able to know that pattern and to be able to continue it. Um, so now I have identified my number of trials. And so I have a little bit more space. I'm actually going to insert a column. So I'll click on column A and right click, and I'm going to insert a column left. There we go. And then I don't need quite this much space because trials is pretty short, the word, so I'm going to shrink this a little bit. There we go. And then I would like all of these values to be in the center. Uh, so I'll highlight everything at once and click the horizontal align, and we're going to go on the center. So they're now all in the middle. And we'll come back to the borders and adding some borders here in just a moment. Um, the next part that I want to do is I need to do some calculations for these. I've got all of these trials, and we always, uh, anytime we have multiple trials, we always want to calculate an average so that we have a better and, and more clear representation of what is the, the data finding. Because as you look at these, you can see there's quite a bit of differences. There's some variation between them. But if we calculate an average, we can get a better true picture of, of what this value is actually at. And you could do this by hand. You could type in each of these values into um, into a calculator and add them up and then divide. Uh, that would take a long time because there's what's, what do we got? 16 trials here. That would take quite a bit of time. So I want to make the spreadsheet do this and it can do it for me much faster. Uh, but I do need to label this row. So I'm going to type in average. And for my personal preference, I'm going to align it so it's on the right hand side. And I think that this is pretty important, this average. So I'm going to go ahead and bold that term. And then we'll also bold the values once we get them. And so how we make the spreadsheet actually calculate this for us is um, the spreadsheet can do some different functions. Uh, calculating average would be one, standard deviation, mode, median, uh, a whole bunch of other functions. Uh, you can Google search for different functions if you'd like. But the one that we're going to use today is average. And so I'm going to start by typing in equals. And it, I can see it already popped up here. Um, but if it didn't, for some reason, I could type in average. And then I can go and select. 
And what this is showing me is I'm going to use the average for C5 to C21. And if I look at my rows, I've got C5 would be this box here. So 5 and C. C5 to C21. C21 looks like it's trial number 17. I could click that. Also, if that didn't pop up, I can also go and select the values that I want it to calculate for. So if I just clicked on the average, and I can click and drag, and I'm going to select C5 to C21 and press Enter. And there is my average right there. I don't have to do anything else. There's the value. It's done all the calculation for me. One last step for this, though, I've got quite a few decimal places. And if I look at my raw data, the values that were recorded from the CO2 probe, um, they're not that, there's not that many decimal places. And so if I look at these, for the most part, all of these values have four significant figures. Most of them have four decimal points or three decimal points with a whole number. So I'm going to change this value so it has four significant figures and four decimal points. And thankfully, this spreadsheet also has a button for this as well. If I look right here next to the percent sign, there's a decimal decrease and increase. And if I click this button, it will decrease the number of decimal points and it will round those remaining. So there we go, 0 0.7286 would be the average for photosynthesis in the dark. I want to do the same steps for photosynthesis in the lights and then photosynthesis with no plant tissue. Uh, but here's another cool trick that's really helpful. Just like we did with our trials and we had all of these trial values get filled in. We can do the same thing with our calculations, with our um, with our average calculation. And if, so if I click on this box that I've already done the average for, there's a little blue icon, and I'm going to click on that. My cursor changes to a plus. I'm going to click, and if I drag, click too hard, if I drag to the right two spots, what this will do is it does the same formula for me, but it knows to do it in the next column over. So if I click on my box here for the photosynthesis rate in the light, I can see it's highlighting it's using D5 to D21. And for this one with no tissue, it's using E5 to E21. It's smart enough to know to be able to do that. And so all I really had to do was type in that calculation once, and then I can click and drag, and it does the rest for me. That's really cool. That's a big time-saving feature. Uh, I'm going to organize this a little bit more. I'm going to make these bold because these are important values. These are the values that we'll then use for our graphs. We always want to graph the averages, and I'm going to align them so they are horizontal as well. A couple last steps to kind of clean up this table and to, to make it finished. Uh, I'm going to put a border around the entire table. So I'm going to highlight all of it. And I'm going to go up to this icon right here, the borders. And we'll put a border around the entire table. And then I also want this box trials to have a border. So I need to add one right there for that. So there we're all, way, all the way around. And then also for these, there we go. So I think my last step would be I want to give this table a title so that it shows to the reader what it is that we're looking at. And I'm going to write that right up top here, uh, right above the table. Uh, and so we always, wherever your table falls in your report, the first table should be called table number one. So I'll assume that this is table number one. So I'm going to write uh, table number one. And then we're going to describe what it is. And essentially your title for this data table or for your graph or uh, for your experiment title. It's really just ba based off of what your independent variable is and your dependent variable is. So if you have those identified, then you can write t titles pretty easily. And in this case, I'm looking at um, the effect of light, because I change whether there was light present or not present. And the effect of light on rate of photosynthesis and I also want to be sure to include my units. And so I measured the rate of photosynthesis in PPT per minute, because um, that's what we measured the carbon dioxide um, values in. So I'm measuring the rate of photosynthesis uh, by measuring carbon dioxide, and I did that in PPT per minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and include this as part of my table. Um, so we'll add one more little border box to it. and. When I click on that, uh oh, I notice that it only does this B3. But I really want it to be this whole way across, the whole table. So I'm going to 
highlight all of those. And there's one other button I want to show you. It's called this merge button. And what this will do is it will put all of the, it will merge all of these boxes, uh, the row three columns B, C, D, and E. It will make them one box. So I'll click that. And then I can see my border went pretty much all the way across. Um, so I have to click that border button one more time. There we go. And because this is the title, I'm going to bold this and uh, maybe we'll make this a bit bigger so it stands out a bit more. Oh, but now we got to expand our line a little bit. There we go. Balance this out just a little bit here. There we go. So now I've got table one, the effect of light on rate of photosynthesis. I have my units. I've calculated some averages. Um, add a couple of borders here so that they're separated. There we go. And now I can go ahead and take this data and use it uh, to be able to make my graph. So hopefully that's helpful and demonstrates how to organize data from a shared spreadsheet uh, that has lots of different trials.